why it's, why it's important, uh, the relationship between the strategic planning and community assessment, uh, considerations in a, in a planning effort, and uh, how to conduct a Welcome. Plan. Please enter your access code followed by the pound sign. Sounds like where we're getting that one. <laughs> Please Sounds enter like your access code followed by the pound sign. Yeah, it sounds like somebody might be logged in twice. Seven, one, nine, one, one, two. If this is correct, press one. To read, there are four participants in this conference. This conference is being recorded. Please announce yourself. Angela's back. <laughs> okay. Did you see this note from Angela came back online. Oh, Angela, you, you dialed into Adobe Connect there. That's the Adobe Connect line, so. Yeah, I don't know what to do. yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so. Yeah, I can't hear at all. You can't hear? Tim and Trine, Trine, is that how you pronounce your name? I'm sorry. Trina. 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 Um, are not able to hear. They, Tim and Try and can he, Trina can help hear themselves, but they can't hear anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so what they need to do is they need to maybe call into the Zoom number, not the Adobe Connect number. So I think Angela sent, uh, let's see, is Angela, Angela muted perhaps? Uh, let's see. No, so John Thompson is muted. Trini is muted. Yes. Um, Angela just sent me another phone number to call in. Did you get All right, I guess we'll try that. Did you get that? Yeah, I did. Okay, I'm going to hang up and try that one. Whoever that was, we heard them. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was Tim and Angela talking, so they're sending. But maybe they're not receiving. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, so let's let's see where we are with our our targeted communities. So which community assessment methods and techniques would you use on your targeted community, and why? Uh, that we're, we looked at in the, in the handbook. Um, Lou, are you able to talk? Yeah, I think so. Can okay. you hear me? Yep. Yeah. My um, targeted community, we um, actually have just working on this, on the 22nd, we're going to finish asset mapping um, with the community um, meetings. I just finished asset mapping with the high school group yesterday. And so was sitting here typing up the minutes from that. And um, the, the, now the white, the um, high school part of this has become part of the opportunity project with the White House. And so we're also asset mapping the skill sets in the community um, who can put together um, some data tools on living in the rurals. And, uh, really loud. Anyway, so um, they're not really interested in any strategic planning, but we are doing a community um, asset mapping to look at what's there right now, um, what are some opportunities now, looking at what they do have, um, and moving forward. So our next scheduled meeting to finish that is April 22nd. And um, what's really exciting is that the community members have been hearing about it, and we have gotten <laughs> For RSVP for working on it on the 22nd and so what, what what started out to be 21 community members is probably gonna be about 60 um, next Friday so I'm uh, a week Friday on the 22nd so we're really excited and um, we're looking at how we're going to um, work with a group that large to be able to, to continue moving forward but um, already using some of the data that we've been using, um, 
we've had I've had two businesses come forward and say they're interested in speaking with the community and and getting their businesses in the community. So it's starting to work piece by piece. Wow, that's fantastic. And one of the one of the businesses would hire forty people starting use an empty building that she would build out and also I'm talking her to start talking to her to start a work training program for some of the high school students. Um, it's a food production um, manufacturing company and she's willing to start some sort of culinary program. We're not sure what that looks like since we just had the conversation this week. So um, it's working. The, the whole planning process is working really well and people are hearing about it and wanting to get on board. Sounds like lots of progress. It is. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Eddie, can you can you say something about your community? Or maybe not. <laughs> Eddie, are you on? Uh, yep. here, okay? This is Trini. Some of us have to hang up and redial, so we missed a good portion of the discussion. Um, but can you hear me okay now? Yes. Okay, there's a lot of feedback. I can hear a lot of echo. Yeah, I think some people are logged on twice, maybe once by phone, and haven't turned off their speakers on their computers. Mm. So if people are, if you're logged in via phone, you want to turn your computer speakers down. So if, uh, as long as you're talking, Trini, why don't you go ahead and tell us where you are at with your community and, you know, um, in terms of uh, the, the assessment methods and techniques. Okay. You... okay. So um, my community in Wapato, we've got an actual date where we are are actually conducting um, my, my itinerary. In May, May 18th, we are going to meet with some of our resources. We maintain a list of resources, people that can help that community. Um, one of the things that I really enjoyed and got out of the strategic planning uh, assignment was identifying resources and that's one of the first things we did identify some of the resources that could help us make this a very successful uh, uh, community forum that we're going to be presenting so that's what we have on may 18th so far i'm meeting with my staff tomorrow they're in the community to try to uh, get some organization and try to kind of tighten up everything marketing and just getting the word out So what, what kind of a process were you going to be using for community assessment, though? So one of the things that we've identified is what are some of the things the community, like a water improvement system and housing. I'm sorry, I can barely hear some what you said, Scott, but I, if I understood you, what are some of the things we're doing? No, the, what are, the methods, the community assessment yeah. method. Okay. Yeah. So we kind of did the, the pre-work on that, the community assessment on, we identified the need of housing and um, a, a water improvement system. So what we're doing now is working for some of the housing advocate groups and we're working with the town itself, the community leaders to um, see if they can improve their water system. So right now, those are the only two things that we've got. Like I said, we are still in a lot of in the pre-planning stages. So is that most, mostly based on data then? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. And the, thing, the needs that some of the resources have indicated to us, that's the two most significant things that they're needing. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, Tim, do you want to talk about your community and uh, the assessment techniques that you're using? Yeah, um, I've actually uh, changed positions starting May 1st, so I won't be 
um, involved with the community that I've targeted. I um, was selected to be the regional Western Regional Coordinator for CED for USDA. So I haven't. I'm not going to be doing the deep dive into the community like I thought I was when I started the class, unfortunately. So I haven't spent a lot of time with them, trying to transition to this new role. Well, congratulations. Well, thanks. Yeah. Oh, when did that happen, or when did when did that decision get made? Um, just right after our last teleconference that we had, or our uh, last class. Well, it's great. Uh, great to have somebody like you in that role. Um, and I'm sure that uh, Angela and and Greg are relieved to have a, a strong person in the West, in the West to work with. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, been in multiple teleconferences and look forward to actually implementing uh, some of the information that actually is being presented during these classes. That's working great. with other Western um, state CED leads. Um, Alexandru? Hello. Um, um, last time I was mentioning that we didn't have a good communication with the uh, Town hall in Plymouth, but actually we had a meeting with a person, Mr. Klimas, that he is like a grant writer for for the town. He came to our office and we discussed about the projects. We discussed what we can offer. The, he seemed pretty interested, and then we didn't hear from them for a couple of weeks. Uh, Actually, we have like a meeting next week with the mayor and they're gonna be other agencies involved, around 10 personnel. Uh, there's gonna be the connected housing authorities, state emergency, the state police. And uh, we'll be discussing some of the projects that uh, the town is looking to implement. They have like a new Plymouth house, firehouse, they wanna, to improve that, they want to improve the communication in the in the town. And they want to talk about new projects for new roadways, water lines, sewer lines, uh, some housing authority major renovations. Uh, that's that's about it. I really didn't think how we're gonna approach this, but. Probably, like from the methods that we will be using, is probably is going to be like the asset mapping. Yeah. What? How? How would you uh, help them? Maybe prioritize. That's a pretty long list. Uh, well, I guess when we go there and we talk to them, because we haven't been in touch with them that much. Just, uh, just when Mr. Klimas stopped by our, our office, and then. There was not uh, a feedback from them until last week when they sent us the email that hey, we will be able to organize a meeting with these people on the 21st. And I guess after that, talking to them, we'll be able to make some progress how to approach this, how to prioritize, like what, what resources they have, what we can jump in. Mm. I don't know, we'll see. Well, uh, I guess I'll pick on, uh, since you, you're in Angela's region, so I won't pick on Angela, I'll pick on Greg and Tim. Do you have advice for Alexandru? On how to sort through the various programs that the community might use? <coughs> And at this point, like I said, I didn't, I didn't hear everything Alexander said, but at this point, it sounds like to me, you they've already told you your needs, correct? Yes. Okay, and we're trying to connect them with programs. Correct. Well, we're going to meet with them, we're going to discuss, like, what what's uh, really probably more important for them, because they have to, whenever they decide which project they have to go, they're going to have to... Uh, organize some type of like because from what Mr. Clemens was telling me like every major project they have to get approval not just from the mayor but from the community itself so we're going to have to identify which projects are more important for them 
And after that, we're going to try to identify resources. Got it. Got it. Uh, and, I, and I like input from everybody, but I, I'd be curious on which, I know, we, well, no, no, let me back off of that. Uh, 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 well, no, I'll go ahead instead. I'm wondering if we already know, like, even though it's up to the community to identify, I guess, what's their priority, I'm wondering with the list or whatever they identified, do we, do we know resources for all of those? Like, for example, let's say if they got five items and they need to pick the top two. For, e for even the five, do we know the resources available? You know, kind of in the back of our heads. Do we kind of know who to go to at this point? Well, some of the projects, uh, they could like apply for the community facility pro program that we have. So, for example, like the sewer, the, the fire department, the, the water projects, yeah, these are like community facility. Then as housing authority, the, this could fall under the um, multiple family housing. Okay. Okay, forgive me, forgive me for asking all this question, but uh, 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 and and, the, and 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 it's unique. Well, no, it's not. Uh, that that they have that, that you got to go back to them, and they need to figure out what they want to do. How is? And I'm coming from my experience because I've I've had good ones and bad ones. Do they get along? Are they working together? Well. I don't know. It's, it's going to be the first time I'm, we meet with the mayor and the, the group, so <coughs> I don't know how that's going to go, but hopefully they, can, they work together. <laughs> okay. I, I've, I've been in some, some communities where it, it, it was pretty bad, you know? So uh, but with that said, just listen. Uh, and and forgive, forgive me for going all the way around the world and come back to this. Just listen, see what they have to say. Okay. Uh, uh, listen to their issues. This is your first meeting, sounds like. Forgive me, I thought maybe there had been some previous ones. So just listen, see what they have to say, and, and then you can you can go from there. Yeah, it, just, it sounded to me like uh, they could use about six different uh, rural development programs, so I was just wondering how they're going to sort that out. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is Tim, and my suggestion would be to find a local community champion as kind of a, a second cut for priorities. Um, because we can have six different programs, but if there's not someone on the other end willing to tackle it, um, whether it's a nonprofit or a, a passion, right there. Um, I think that's a key to helping a community prioritize is to identify the local champions. Okay, thank you. Good. Good. Uh, let's see. I don't think Valerie's on today. Um, so, uh, Orman? Can, can you say something about how you would, what methods you'd use in your community? We had Orman on, didn't we? He's logged in. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll, uh, we'll just move on then. Um, did I, is there anybody on that didn't get a chance to talk? I, I don't think so. So, um, so strategic planning, what is it? Uh, this is Eddie. I didn't get a chance to talk, but. Oh, okay. I called on you earlier and you, uh, okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, apologies. I was trying to go from the, uh, from the computer to the phone and probably that's probably when I missed it. So, um, so as far as, oh, you just changed the slides. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> okay. So. As far as uh, community assessments that we're going with, I mean, I can give you the abridged version and, and just tell you that some of the community assessment uh, things that we're going to be using, like comparative, sec comparative secondary data and key informant interviews, uh, we'll be using those in conjunction with a few others, obviously, because there's not really one that, that is a catch-all, if you will. Uh, as far as the background with what's going on with, with my area, uh, we'll be using those assessment tools uh, to my, pulling this up right here, apologies. All right, so Heather Urena is part of the Kasachi Delta Regional Planning and Development District. She and I are going to work in tandem to um, approach the mayor of the town of Winfield 
and we're going to speak to him first, uh, along with five to eight people of his choosing, and just have a kind of little SWAT session, talk about what's going on with the community, and then we're going to have a little bit bigger session uh, about within the next three to four weeks after that initial session. And then we're going to invite 20 to 30 people from the parish, um, key leaders, police jurors, um, people of that nature. Uh, and then we'll have another kind of SWAT evaluation, asset mapping, brainstorming, things of that nature. And then <clears throat> the next session within two weeks after that, that second session, we're going to have a civic forum and then kind of use comparative analysis between the second session and the third session. And then uh, on the set, uh, the, the fourth session, we're going to have a, we're going to kind of launch things. Uh, again, we met yesterday. So this is, is in the kind of planning stages right now, but, but that's pretty much an overall synopsis of, of where we're at right now. It sounds like you're well on your way. We're, we're trying. So we, we, we developed a decent plan of action. You know, it's, it's fluid right now. So uh, we talked at length yesterday about everything and, you know, things will change obviously, but we, we feel like we've got a pretty good plan in place as of yet. And we'll see how it unfolds as the, as the weeks and unfold. Yeah. Sounds exciting. So um, when somebody says strategic planning, what, what does that mean to you when, when, uh, when you hear those words? Any, anybody? I just think it's planning for the future or an organized planning for the future, not just um, doing it from the hip. Anybody else? Uh, I concur with what she says. She pretty much got it dead on, you know, it, basically thinking about it before actually doing it methodically, I should say. Yeah. And, and, and also, you know, thinking about, yeah, where, what the future is going to look like and how do you, how does your organization fit into that future and how can you uh, have a better future with it? I, I think, I think too, when you're, you know, starting your strategic planning, if you really follow the steps, you're really planning a success. I mean, if it's done with understanding the capacity of your, your community or organization you're working with, and you understand the resources or limited resources, you can really use that for your goals and strategies to really plan for success to help the community or organization grow and, and move into the future. I think you just answered the question here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Sorry. Good. No, that's good. That's good. That's good. So how do we, what, what are the linkages here? I think you might have done a little bit of that too um, in what you were saying there. But um, how, do you, how do you go from um, community assessment to strategic planning? What's that process look like? Um, this is Lou. I do a little bit of community assessment before or <coughs> assessment. Um, I've just been asked to do one for a farm and I'm in the first phase of a community assessment looking at, you know, who has the capacity. Um, and if we do this plan, you know, to what degree can, how involved can the plan become where it doesn't become overwhelming. So I'm looking at a little bit of that assessment and then we'll go into the strategic planning and community any more technical community assessment with them but I do a little bit beforehand so um, that when I walk into the a meeting for the very first time that um, I'm talking with them not at them yeah and I think there's there's an iteration that there too right so you may be going with the what the data say and then uh, of course the data are always um, old right <laughs> and they, they cover things up as well as, as showing things so you know, um, uh, I just finished a community a strategic plan for a community that in my community assessment prior to starting the strategic plan back in October I realized that the the committee that I'd be working with 
most of them were illiterate. And so that assessment made me approach strategic planning a little bit differently. For sure. And if you'd probably looked at county level data, you wouldn't have known that all of the Ill illiterate people were in that. In one room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, other thoughts about how to, how to move between these two items from anyone else? Trini? I'm trying to um, identify, we did kind of a community assessment as well. And when we talk strategic planning, it, there's all levels of strategic planning. It, it could be a short term, one year, uh, it could be five year, it could be 10 year. You know, I think one of the things that is important for the communities to realize is they need to, I think you mentioned it before, Scott, is they need to rate which ones are the most priority projects you like to see in a community because everybody has different um, different projects that they want to be, that they feel are a priority. It may be different with, with the parents and it may be different with the town officials. It's different to, with homeowners. But I think for, for us, the, the biggest um, hurdle has been the strategic planning because uh, some of them wanted a short term, but when you find the resources or looking for the resources, it's going to be a long process to be able to get uh, them through that process with all the state funders, federal funders, local funders. So for me, strategic planning is one of the most important part of this whole community economic development process. So, That's great. I, just, I think ahead, that we have very different uh, strategies that we could do. So. I, I am just thinking about the tension that is, is oftentimes present where uh, maybe people or local officials want something immediate, so there's a short run, but oftentimes, as you mentioned, there, it takes many years to um, put a plan in place and then see the fruits of, of all those efforts, so I just was you know, just thought I'd put it out there. Have you all experienced that tension along the way? Um, this is Lou in, in Nevada. What we've started, and I've been doing this for about 20 years now, I started what's called the project-based quick start. It's just a hybrid that I've made up so that when they have those kinds of tensions, um, we'll go in and find one priority issue that we can do in short term and go through the strategic planning process with just one goal and develop the strategies and the, the turnaround time is fairly quick. They get it, they can start implementing it. Then they feel really comfortable with the process and we can go back and start looking at um, the lengthy, more involved um, strategic planning process. I'd be, I'd be curious uh, on that. You know, I think the, the Lou makes a really important point there that uh, sometimes people can get discouraged and. Maybe the highest priority thing is the one that takes longer and something that is a little quicker might uh, encourage people to move along. So given that, um, are there programs that USDA Rural Development offers that you know, are, are some of them faster than others? Um, you know, in terms of the, 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 the programs that uh, you have, you would help them process from your agency? Uh, this, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'll a quick comment. Your generally your equipment grants are quicker. Like for example, uh, a grant for a fire truck, police car, uh, something, something, something along those lines. They are quicker because you, your construction projects, for example, or even a water wastewater system. There's a whole bunch of uh, environmental, for example, can be can take a long time whole bunch of other factors that can make that go on for years where like some of your uh, equipment needs for example those can be some quick success uh, that, 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 that you can get for communities like that but, but th those are some very good points having some of those quick successes I like the fire truck one yeah yeah there you go mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. the elected officials can stand next to the fire truck and say that they did something yeah yeah Yep. Yeah, yep. Once, they've been through, once they've been through that formal planning process and they felt a success, it really opens the door 
and more people will want to come in and be a part of it because they've seen success. Um, but it really does. If you just do a project-based quick start, um, we've just, and now my state director, I've done it with her and she really likes it. So now she wants them all over the state and we're teaching all the staff um, in Nevada how to do them. So um, we can get more people excited about the formal planning processes. Well, and you have, you have now three uh, regional CD people on the line. So I think maybe that, that will spread. I don't know, Tim, are you going to start thinking about that in the West and Greg? And I don't know if Angela's back, but. Uh, I'm back, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good concept for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, great. Um, yeah. So, um, so here are some of the steps that would go into a kind of a formal um, yeah. strategic planning process where we're forming a steering committee, gaining commitment, and facilitating the process. Um, I still do that. And, mm -hmm. uh, How would how would you go about broaching this with a with a commit with a community? You know, they you feel like they need it. Uh, how would you how would you get them to, to move that way? How would you suggest they have on it? Who? So they might not come to you and say we need a steering committee, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I have them just come to me and say, we need a strategic plan. Where do we start? Oh, okay. so how do you recruit a, a steering committee? Um, I mean, do so you recruit a steering committee? Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of them already have some idea for people, but for moving into um, a couple that were looking at Nye County, um, I've talked to um, this one large nonprofit and we are right now in the process of of recruiting a steering committee and we're looking at business owners within the community and county commissioners um, because through this large large nonprofit we're gonna be building a supply chain in a very small town that needs some business development and so we're sitting down right now um, we've got a long list and so um, but they were really he was excited a couple of people I said first we need a steering committee for people that are engaged and will champion the change and they were all excited about it. So, Luz, can I ask mm -hmm. you a question? Sure. This is Trini. On the steering committees, I haven't worked with the community that has developed a, uh, or established a steering committee. Are they a separate, I, I don't want to say entity, but is there a budget that they provide them with so they can do the work that they need to do? Right or, now, in past steering committees, I've had budgets, but this one, um, one person's going to fund it. He owns a gold mine. So, okay. seriously. Um, okay. He does. He owns a gold mine. Only in Nevada. <laughs> seriously. So, um, so what? he's going to fund the meetings um, to be held in the small town um, in various little restaurants. So, he's going to be providing the lunches for the first couple of meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and the people, um, we haven't approached them yet, but the people that we're looking at, this could be considered part of their job to help the economic development of Nye County. And mm -hmm. so it might be part of their job function. And so we wouldn't really have a lot of resources needed right now. Um, mm -hmm. but, and, and a lot of people too in Nye County are aware that we're putting together the steering committee because I've had people call and say they want to volunteer to be on it. Um, mm -hmm. So um, it's it's going fairly smooth right now. Okay. What was that original question? I'm sorry, I, I missed that original question. Well, it's basically, um, you know. No, you no, no, I'm sorry. The young lady that asked the question from uh, Louise. Oh, okay. Oh, that, that was Trini. This is Trini, Trini. Greg. Trini. Okay, Trini. Did you want me to repeat the question that Lucy yes, answered? Please. Yes, 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 please. One of the things that I, I see in here, it says forming a steering committee. And I've I worked with community as before where 
you know, they have not established a steering committee because first it is all volunteer, uh, volunteer from the community members themselves. But sometimes, um, and I see in the assignment, it talks about lobbying for resources. So there's a lot of time where the steering committee uh, needs to travel or, or attend meetings and things like that. So I was asking you <laughs> if there's a budget or do any of the steering committees have to establish some type of a budget for them? Okay. Yeah, I, th I think it's often uh, can be a good signaling me mechanism if somebody who's viewed as a, a leader does put in a, even a little bit of resources. Uh, at a minimum, it can tell people they don't oppose it. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes in these small communities, uh, they get really afraid that they're going to offend uh, some some power broker, and if the power broker puts in five hundred dollars for lunches, then it's sort of been blessed. Yeah, and he's actually doing it to, I mean, uh, uh, to to make amends with a, a local restaurant. Uh, <laughs> it's an outdoor education program, and when his weekends are full, the restaurant has to have overtime, and so we've made that communication that he'll let him know so that he has more regular hourly staff on. So it's kind of amending some bad feelings anyway. But um, so far, there's there's not been a lot of need. Everybody in Nye County is used to traveling. It's just something that everybody does because it, it's such a large county. Um, but right now, uh, the people that are volunteering that wants to be on it, um, there's not a problem with the budget. Um, so it's just that we're making sure that we identify the time commitment because this will be a full on strategic plan, not project based. So it will be a lengthy commitment of time. Yeah, it's usually more time than money when right. you get involved with in a steering committee. Yeah, this is a full on um, strategic plan with lots of goals and there'll be pretty lengthy goals. and. So we're making sure that the people have, are going to commit to at least 18 months. So let's say we're, we're in Alexandru's position and, you know, we've got this laundry list of, of things that the mayor wants. Um, you know, how would you talk to the mayor about forming a steering committee? Uh. And this is not, you, you can answer the question too, Alexandru, but others, others might be able to advise. Yeah, I would, I would, I'm open to suggestions because <laughs> I, I haven't done this before, so I'm just in a learning process here. Yeah. Well, you clearly want to talk to the mayor about, you know, all the various segments in the community and who he might want to have around the table so that you know, he wants to, or she, I'm not sure if your mayor is a female or a male, but that, you know, you, you don't, you know, you want to create a, a, an atmosphere of being inclusive. So, you know, you want to make sure he's inviting people to the table who have interests. So, you know, whether that's um, the, a religious community, you know, the school district, educators, or people like that, so that, you know, people of all interests, you know, youth, you know, that all interests get served uh, on that committee. Yeah, you know, this is Lou. I also think too that possibly does the mayor understand the steps in strategic planning? So do they understand the importance of a steering committee and the role? And sometimes I think when someone understands the role of the committee, that they can start thinking about the type of people that might serve on it. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, starting there. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing, Luis, that like really sitting down and explaining to the mayor the benefits of having a steering committee in place. Like I said, a lot of the small rural towns probably are not familiar you know, uh, with, with moving forward with that process, so just explain the benefits and, 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 and keep them on board in regard and to really that. Put it back into his court that a steering committee will really help him achieve success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at a minimum, it's sort of political cover. Yeah, yeah. really. Mm -hmm. Yep. A very good point. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, who the, this budget that we were talking about, who establishes that budget for the steering committee? Is it the, the mayor itself or, or his uh, team? 
Well, it might be the mayor or it might be uh, some in-kind contribution from some other groups in, in the town. Um, the mayor would probably have a, uh, have a sense of who might be willing to you know, support it. But I think it does, you know, it kind of boils down to lunches and, you know, it doesn't wind up yeah. being super expensive. Right. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I think we've kind of covered this one a little bit, just, uh, you know, explaining the benefits of the process and, and things like that. Um, how about facilitating it? How do we go about doing that? And what's what's the role of the RD professional? Angela, you wanna chime in on that one? Well, it's gonna be different in different states. Um, you know, you know, clearly, you know, in Lou's state, she's got a very involved state director who's wants a, a very proactive um, presence by rural development. And so I, you know, I really applaud that because, I mean, that is a really, um, probably losing the adjective I'm looking for, but, you know, you, you know, when we can go in and really provide that technical assistance and, and help lead that, you know, that's, that's a really great, uh, resource we can bring to the table. There'll be other state directors who don't see that as our role. And so you really have to be clear that um, you know, you're, you're working the, your state director's plan. You know, if he th or she thinks that, you know, our role is to just provide resources, that you're not going in and providing that real in-depth capacity building. So I always tell my CED leads, make sure you understand what your state director believes your role to be in terms of community development and the level of capacity building you're providing. Uh, and if you're able to, like, uh, Lou, to go in there and really provide that in-depth capacity building, I think we have a better chance of really getting great sustainable um, loans and, you know, really connecting the dots for those communities. And then the communities around them because, you know, success breeds success. You and know, one those, thing, I'm, I'm sorry. One thing that we're doing in Nevada and my state director is that our role in RD is that we go in as a co-facilitator, a co-leader, mm -hmm. and that we get somebody from the community as um, <clears throat> helps us mm -hmm. because at some point we have to transition off. We're not going to be there forever. Right. We have and, and that's something that Sarah and I, my state director, we discuss quite often is that when, when are we finished with our strategic planning process? So, you know, when do we count our success, but when do we pass the baton that now the implementation process is really up to them? And right. that through the planning process, we've taught formal planning processes, so they get it and we can be there, but we've developed also a huge partnership, community partners that we have vetted already that will be a part of implementation. So yeah. our it's like role, a mentorship. It and is. They almost become their mentor, you know, so it's somebody they can come back to for just yes. further guidance, but not somebody who's actually leading the effort. Right. I don't see it myself as a lead in any of these, mm -hmm. as just more of a facilitator in building leaderships and finding the leaders to take on that necessary leadership role. Because Nevada is so big, <laughs> now there's so many people asking for strategic planning that there's just, there's not enough time. We've had to come up with some little tests that we do mm -hmm. uh, for capacity and resources on, on where, what communities we're going to be um, facilitating. Mm -hmm. And, and for states that are not necessarily able to go out and do that level of facilitation or for whatever reason, I think you should partner with your planning districts, council of government, you know, they go under different names for different states and your extension services. If you right. can put them in, they can facilitate, you know, uh, mm -hmm. this process in regard to setting up a steering committee as well. So okay. Reaching out to those partners uh, that can provide that service. What uh, about the mayor? Should, should the mayor do it? No. no, I don't think no. <laughs> it, it goes back to that. Um, you know, some some communities may they may 
uh, get along really well and work together well, but you know, all don't. So like I said, anytime you have that outside presence, generally it's gonna work better. I agree. Echo from somebody. I think somebody's lo logged in twice again. But um, well, so here, here's the here are the steps that were in the the handbook here. So you know, develop the vision, identify resources, choose issues and opportunities, uh, set long-term goals and strategies, and then start all over again. It's it's a uh, you know it's a continuous process really, and you know as as Lou had brought up. Uh, you know, the more that you can build the capacity of the group to do some of this on their own, um, probably the better off everyone is. Um, so what, what is that vision statement? What, why do we have a vi vision statement? Well, uh, number one, I think you want to have a, a goal in any kind of endeavor you you pursue. So having an end statement or a vision statement uh, gives you something to to strive for. You know, it helps everybody agree on where they're going, right? So otherwise, you wind up with with this, right? Where it's. Uh, mm -hmm. um, it helps in meetings too when new people join in that you'll always have that to kind of well this is really what we're here to talk about today so you don't start doing a lot of stamp collecting and spending a whole meeting talking about something that had nothing to do with your vision good point uh, yeah it, and it sets the tone as well like yes. kind of piggybacking on what you're saying sets the tone about what we're here to talk about as opposed to all these branches that we could go off into rabbit holes if you will yeah. So here's uh, Carroll County, Indiana, um, and talking about their future, direction and focus, reflects the community's values, getting people to work together uh, is achievable, but takes some risks, is developed by, uh, you know, the community, not just a couple people. And, and there's a consensus process that seems to be pictured here. Um, where that starts to happen. So here's here here it is. Just take a, take a moment to read it, I guess. Are there specifics in there about how we're going to do this? No. Not really, are there? You know, it's it's a vision, right? It's not uh, it's not implementation. It's uh, where where do we want to go? So that's that's kind of the the difference between. Uh, vision and, and some of the other pieces. Questions, comments about that? Sound like somebody wanted to talk. No? It, it seemed, and, and I could be wrong about this, it just seemed a little long to me. I agree. A little wordy, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So how do you identify resources to, to draft a successful plan? Um, or what, what are they? What are, what are, what are they? <laughs> you need people. Need people, uh, you need people um, with some authority. Decision makers. Yeah. Um, What else do you need? People that are knowledgeable uh, about the area. People who have what, expertise. Yeah. Some degree of cooperation.
cooperation or willingness to talk? Yeah. And how do you how do you identify those resources then? Mm -hmm. Can you repeat that statement? I didn't hear it at all. Mark, you want to repeat what you said? Oh, I just uh, sometimes uh, <laughs> just the the collaborative uh, feeling of collaboration and cooperation. Uh, sometimes you can butt heads, and how do you redirect? Yeah, that's true. And resources are there are the resources in the community? Maybe. Some um, will, I'm sure. Yeah, there's some resources in the in every community. Uh, right. And then of course there's external resources as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and this goes goes back a little bit what we were talking about earlier about those those uh, immediate uh, those small successes um, you know sometimes um, there are some things that are very pressing you know um, we're, we're in Michigan here we're, we're dealing with the Flint water situation and you know that's not something that we want to be delaying right in fact I there's a big meeting going on right outside of my door about that right now with the governor's task force report uh, happening as we speak, right? Uh, just steps away. Obviously, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with a situation like that, it needs to be, uh, you know, fast, uh, but then you have to also be thinking about the future. Um, what about in your communities? Um, Trini, do you, can you dif differentiate between the immediate and the future? in terms of the, the needs that are coming up in your community? You know, one of the things we've identified as a need, um, it, it, the first thing that came to mind for everybody was housing, lack of housing. Uh, the town is extremely old that they've got a lot of old dilapidated homes or apartment complexes. So one of the things that they thought about is housing first. But in order to bring housing, you've got to have the infrastructure first. It's got to be the, uh, the improvement in water system or sewer system and, and roads and, and utilities and so on. So that's one of the things that we did is, um, I mentioned before that we have every year we do a IACC meeting, which is bringing state funders, federal funders, uh, and communities together here in our town of Wenatchee. And they bring what projects they need in their communities and then they have technical meetings with uh, funders. A uh, funder would have a workshop and the communities come to them to say this is the type of resources we have, the funding available. So that's one of the things that um, we continue to do every year and it helps the community go back and be able to establish a, a strategic plan for within their own community needs. So I think that the it, sometimes their priorities have to change because even though in the future they need housing but their immediate needs will probably be the water system in order for those housing to be uh, built um, so sometimes we find that they come with one project but we realize they need another uh, to have another need that's more uh, pertinent to their project so, so we have a lot of discussions about that Good. So how do you, how do you choose between these issues and opportunities? How do you prioritize? Are you asking me again? Uh, yeah, you want to keep going? Or, yeah. Tim hasn't said anything for a while either. So. Go ahead, Tim. Tim, do you want to chime in? Well, so again, as far as prioritizing, um, like I said earlier, it comes down to trying to find the, the local champions of the different projects and issues that are present. Um, it just uh, it seems to make an easier um, process moving forward if you do have that community buy-in on that particular issue. So I think that's an important part of the resource assessment is finding the local um, champions. And again, I think uh, Lou kind of uh, alluded to that with developing the local leadership. You can do a local champion or you could also think about um, some kind of community meeting. 
to uh, help understand, uh, you know, how people feel about different issues. Uh, you know, there's uh, the severity and the magnitude are are two different uh, ways of thinking about it. Um, you know, if a few people have lead in their water, that's probably not. Um, that's probably not something you could ignore, even though it's um, maybe not affecting everybody. It's uh, so you know, the, and then the magnet, you know, the number number of people affected is obviously important as well. So there's kind of a balance there. Well, I think that's true. If you look at any situation that, um, and that's how a lot of I think communities galvanize is there's a negative consequence happening. Um, I rarely see communities gather over a positive. Well, actually that does happen, but mostly it's over something that's um, immediate, um, that's on the kind of the negative side, um, that's a call to action. And I see that when uh, cooperatives start also, is that when the economy is good, people don't tend to cooperate as much because they're kind of going their own way. But when prices start going down or there's a, um, a blip in the market, people will start scratching their heads and say, maybe we should start working together. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we sort of uh, talked about two of these methods, uh, the, sort of the uh, stakeholder driven method and uh, community oriented method. Um, uh, I guess the, 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 um, the popular average method might be a survey or it might be um, a community meeting. Uh, kind of thing. So there are different ways of doing this. And um, you know, so how do you choose between them? When do, you, when do you apply one and not the other? I don't think there's any hard and fast rule. It depends on the situation that you're in and the community that you're working with. Yeah, but I think it's to be comfortable with all of them in your toolkit so that when the situation arises, you know which one to use. Yeah, I think if you go into a, a community and they seem like they really know where they're going, then, you know, maybe you, you don't need to do the popular average method because they seem to have, you know, a plan. But if they're sort of really all over the board and they really don't know what they want to do, then maybe, you know, some of these other more group process things would be uh, helpful in moving that along. What about the long-term goals? Um, so, you know, we've got these pressing issues, but what about long-term goals? Um, and, you know, we've got these long-term goals that are, are embedded in the uh, vision statement, and then we, we rank them. Um, you know, we, we, we come up with rankings for them. And we've got um, a couple methods here. Um, for uh, arriving at a long-term goal. One is to just make each goal an issue. So you kind of one at a time, or you, you kind of group them together, um, issues and opportunities together to, into a theme, and then the, the theme becomes the goal. So um, just a couple different ways of, of dealing with that. Um, does anybody have experience with trying both methods and any comments about the difference between the two of them? Or not? <laughs> what might be the advantage? I've done both ways and just recently, as, as recently as November, did an issue based setting goals. And we started out trying to, I was a co facilitator for a, a large nonprofit in the state. And um, we started out trying to do by themes and based on issues and opportunities and could not even get, and it was a room full of nonprofit leaders trying to come together with this. And so it was difficult because they all had kind of, um, it was hard for them to become followers versus leaders. <laughs> so we just went, it was, that was more of a challenge than we thought, but um, we ended up doing each issue that had been identified in a previous survey as a goal. And then we got through it that day just by getting the goals identified in one day. 
Good. Other thoughts? Anybody else have experiences with this or see the advantages and disadvantages? Uh, well, this is Tim, and um, when I've done strategic planning with organizations, communities, um, it's kind of a fluid process, not really one or the other. It just seems that when you're working with a group, uh, people will throw out ideas, opportunities. Uh, it's just a matter of someone kind of combing through that and building a timeline because there's oftentimes good ideas that are generated, but it might be a short-term one that's leading to a longer-term uh, goal. So I think um, in my experience, it's a matter of uh, kind of developing a timeline after you, of course, you've established your vision, which is where you're headed, and kind of from the, I guess, the farthest point forward moving toward the present is what do we need to do to move forward as an organization toward that one goal. So it's, to me, it's always been fluid and not necessarily one methodology, but just kind of trying to figure out what the timelines are. Okay, good. Good point. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like some of those might actually be strategies, right? So you start to get into strategies. Um, so what's the difference between a strategy and a goal? Got outcomes. <clears throat> well, maybe we can uh, provide an example here in the next slide. So, so here's here's kind of the issue and the goal and the strategy it's all all together you guys are still doing our bag right yeah rbdgs yeah similar so do i need to alter yeah you might yeah change it to call rbdg they just renamed it yeah there you go <laughs> so um so you, so you, you see the, the, the issue there is high unemployment and we want to increase by 30 jobs and then here are the strategies for, for dealing with that. Um, and, um, you know, there's, there's probably um, some short and long-term wins that you can have in there, right? Um, what, would be the, what would be the quicker one of those five? Offer nightly classes. Yeah. yeah. You could do that pretty quickly. <coughs> change job training center offerings. That would be just changing their agendas, their training curriculum. Yep. John? Yeah. This is Norman. I think I finally got my uh, phone system to work here. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, I do have a comment. Um, yeah, screen and even in this one, sometimes when you're going through some of these, where uh, you know you're, you're completing an activity for a specific goal, and particularly for long-term goals, a lot of times what happens is what you do to get to that goal affects other goals. You have to remember that you know everything that you do in an overall strategic plan, everything that you do possibly or most of the time affects something else. So, you know, whenever you're moving towards a goal, whether it's a long-term or short-term or whatever it is, it, it's always the bigger picture. That's true. It, it, it goes back to that earlier slide of always reassessing uh, where you're at. That's a good point. Um, so let's see, and that might be good up for this next one where you've got sort of the all of these things going on at the same time um, and uh, all the different action plans um, and Janet has these kind of laid out in different years and things um, so can it be it, it could be helpful to kind of map this out for the community uh, with some more specifics um, has anybody had experience doing that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. yep. 
So here we have uh, a community that literally put together a brochure on it. Um, I don't see that happening very often. Usually it's just uh, a document, but uh, kind of an interesting concept. Has anybody tried that? I've not seen it before. Just a three ring binder. Yeah, that, yeah. Tends, that tends to be more what, what people do, but uh, you know, something like this might be helpful to, um, you know, to share with uh, potential funders or if, if the vision involves, uh, you know, trying to get uh, you know, private sector investment in for new businesses or for new housing, you know, something like that might, uh, might help sell it to an investor. Uh, or to the community if there are you know people that are wondering what's going on um, look, it could be good yeah um, any other thoughts about this topic today we're kind of coming to the end of uh, the slides uh, we're gonna get more into this next time uh, with action planning and evaluation and um, we've got homework Again, um, one question I had for you is, um, how are you feeling about this Zoom call? Should we stick with Zoom or should we go back to Adobe Connect? I didn't have Could they? Well, it did take us about. I think we should just. Uh, I think what most of the bugs got worked out with the Zoom Connect, so I'd say give it another shot. Um, recognize it. I think uh, I called in the wrong number to begin with, because um, my computer doesn't support, or at least I don't have a headset that I can interact via computer. And um, I think if people realize it, that they can't be connected twice, that wouldn't work. <laughs> okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we'll tr we'll try it again. Maybe we'll try to send out um, only one login this <laughs> next time. <laughs> uh, I actually looked on my Outlook calendar invite, um, and that's where the old um, call-in number was. So yeah, sure. that was my mistake. Yeah. Well, we were getting some feedback that folks wanted to try out the with the camera, so we thought we'd give it a shot today and. Uh, uh, Rose had been working with some folks to see if people would want to try it offline instead of trying to do it during a session. But, uh, um, it works differently with one-on-one -on -one than it does in a session anyway. So I thought we'd go ahead and give it a shot. So um, people want to um, try it again next time on the 28th, and then, um, then we can uh, maybe assess it for future sessions for the, the non-guinea pig groups that will follow you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's a good idea. Hey, Scott, before we um, take off, would you go back to your, your schematic on the vision and strategies? Sure. I was just thinking about this and, you know, uh, on, you know, we all have our experiences with this, but I've had experiences where um, the vision for where a community wanted to go was pretty clear and once everybody kind of got on board there were some goals that were set in place and and uh, an action plan and a strategy for getting there and it took a while but, but then, <laughs> and then I've been, uh, oh, that's a lot of feedback isn't it there it goes okay I've also participated in um, this kind of uh, a process where the, the challenges um, were pretty complex and difficult and, um, you know, coming up with an, a, a unified vision was a bit of a, a challenge and, you know, so we, we kind of got there with the vision, but at the end of the day, there really wasn't as much buy-in as one would hope and then all of this other stuff kind of really never had any legs and, and nothing happened. And I, you know, I, I just sort of bring up those two examples and I'm sure each of you have had those kinds of things where, you know, sometimes um, this works very well <laughs> and, um, and the community is able to 
take some steps and in, in several years be uh, you know in a better position and other times it, it it doesn't go so well and realize that that you know that's just part of life right um and um, anyway i just thought i'd bring that out uh, or, or you know sort of bring up those two examples and see what you all thought and if you've had you know experiences on both sides of that yeah, um, I, I guess sometimes it, um, sometimes you get a, you know, just an unexpected uh, change. You know, I went through a process with a community and the, really the mayor was really very supportive. You know, she was just awesome. Um, and then um, she had a family change and she had to, had to leave town. <laughs> and uh, you know nobody was there to pick up the pieces once the mayor left and mm. so um, you know you you kind of have to start over from scratch and in, in a situation like that so um, you know it, 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 it's, things happen right so yeah That's great Okay, well, thanks everybody, um, and we'll uh, we'll check in um, in um, on the twenty eighth, and what that's back on a Thursday, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 figured, I figured when we did that, somebody would get tripped up, so it's not surprising. Mm -hmm. that, uh, well, but the invite did say Thursday the thirteenth. Oh, did it? Oh, dear. Okay. Yes. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. It's my confusion. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, very good. So uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, check in with you next time, and, and uh, hope hope to hear more about your progress with your communities uh, in our final session. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Hey, everybody, Bye. take care. Bye. It's the the meeting.